Hi guys, we're here to talk about Get Up and Go. Um, first of all, what drew you to the film? What made you want to do it? Okay. <laughs> um, well, I, the process when I went in and read for it um, initially, which was probably about four years ago, uh, was Brendan was had just a really, really interesting and refreshing way of auditioning people, like as in you give, like drama school, which I never um, mm. experienced properly as an adult, or at all as an adult. But giving you a, a, a clear intention in a scene where you went into the scene basically t where you're being fired and that you have to do whatever you can to change that person's mind. And obviously the other person was given the intention of basically not letting you leave here with your job. So that was for something for me that really for me as an actor was helpful because sometimes you go into auditions and you're very much like you're, you're learning lines and you need to get them right you're kind of like okay it's very regiment and you're like you get there and you do it and then you're like oh, geez, I, I've no idea if that went well at all mm. because I didn't actually get to show any like way of acting I just kind of learned the line and said them sometimes sure, it go sure. well sometimes it don't but this is real way where I left and I went actually I left nothing behind there yeah I was like yeah, if, yeah. He, if I don't get that that's grand sure yeah, but yeah, like, yeah exactly and then also like the, the idea the way he wanted to work so that was his idea was want to work like before the film doing improvisations of scenes that preceded the film itself. Mm. And then of course to work with Killian. I, obviously we worked on Love Hate, but we had very few scenes together. Like, So um, it was a really interesting thing to do. Yeah, much the same. I mean, I, I really liked, um, I responded a lot to Brendan as a director. I thought the, his, the process that Peter talked about just there um, was something that, I re that really appealed to me um, the way I like to, to try and go about acting at least. And I just thought he had a real honest sensitivity and, you know, would provoke, would be able to provoke from me the, the performance that we needed to, to, to find. Um, and yeah, you know, to work with Pete obviously was just gonna, was something I was really excited about because, you know, we didn't really have a huge amount of time, as Pete said, on, on Love Hate together. We didn't share the screen that much. <clears throat> and, as, and whenever we did, it was normally in a state of conflict. So it's actually, play, you know, very close friends over a very challenging 24 hours in Dublin together, which is what the film's kind of about, um, was, uh, was something that really appealed to me. Um, and also to shoot in Dublin and to be in the city and, you know, it was cool. I, yeah, I really liked it. Great. Um, the film has this very sort of lo-fi, understated feel. I mean, there's no car chases through Dublin City sure. or anything like yeah. that. Was it challenging to keep that sort of low level, but to keep it engaging as well? Um, well, it's interesting. I mean, I do agree. I think that's a, as a tone, it's 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 a very um, there's a, it's got a very gentle quality to it. Um, but I suppose you, you don't you're not as aware of those things when you're the act, uh, when you're performing it. That's I suppose more for Brendan and you know, kind of, that's kind of like what Brendan is kind of it's like his character, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> isn't yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting. It's an interesting kind of angle to look at. It. I never saw it as that way, but yeah, I don't think I think the whole. Um, world that Brendan was creating and the whole atmosphere that he created with the rehearsals and with the actual shoot itself, it was that kind of idea of it being very real and the scenarios being you know, like everyday events. Quite um, natural. Quite natural, yeah. yeah. So no, no, I don't think it was. It wasn't hard to keep that going because I don't think it was ever in our minds that we had to keep it going. Yeah, exactly. I think it was something that was just, just present. And I suppose you, you commit to every scene as it comes and yeah. you, you don't that, that's not the kind of thing I would ever consider, I suppose. What is the overall tone of this, and do we need to be conscious of that? And Because in this scene, we were like this, do we need to be like this and this? And, you, know, you just kind of play it as it comes. And Obviously, Brendan must have had an idea there. Oh, Brendan, I guess, would have to, about yeah. That, yeah. I hope so. And as, an art, as a <laughs> kind of a guy who studied art, he'd know about you know, the tone of what he likes or the kind of hmm. what the whole piece would look like together. Yeah. So he might be a genius. <laughs> Um, director Brendan Grant has said that he mined his own experience for the film and the experience of stories that his friends have told him. Did you guys do any of that? Is there any of yourselves in your characters? Yeah, 100% for me. Like, but I think that's the same almost. I, I don't know, it's weird. Like it, the way I look at acting and certainly every character is some mining of a personal experience. No matter how extreme the character is, whether it's Tommy or, you know, 71 or Calvary, you know, it's all... You're, all use, you're always using things that you have experienced. Now, granted, it might be in a different context for this character, <coughs> but it's kind of always just you. But, I mean, I think one of the things that I liked about the film was that it, I felt that there was lots of myself that I could express that I hadn't had the opportunity to before. You know, like, 
yeah, I, I don't know. It was for me. It was a very the process of it in that respect was quite was quite sort of satisfying because I felt I could just be myself, a closer version of myself mm-hmm. um, to the real version. You know, more in this film more than I had had the opportunity before, perhaps. Um. Yeah, I mean, I think it's 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 kind of nearly impossible to not get bring some of yourself into it. Like even if you try not to, it will eventually come in mm. to play. Um, but yeah, there was elements, yeah, of yourself in it, of course. Um, I suppose it's, it's elements of yourself viewing the character, and kind of, I suppose, I don't know. It, like it's a, it's going through you anyway. It's always just it's always you. It's going through you, yeah. but yeah, it was also like oh, it's such a different character to me and. But I do know people who are kind of similar to that. But yeah, there are bits of me and bits of anatomy, of course. But um, and there's experience that he went through that I never went through, and the experience that he went through that I've gone through mm. since, and stuff like that. But um, yeah, you take bits. I mean, everyone is. There's so many varieties of shades and colours to people, anyway. That I think you never find a character that was in a hundred percent representation of yourself. But certainly, I you know, I think. I felt Colleen had enough ingredients there that were similar for me. Yeah. And the film is set, as you say, in a day or 24 hours. There are so many great films that are set in one day, like Ember Records, Ferris Bueller, Falling Down. Mm-hmm. Was there anything that you took inspiration from t- for this film? Um, no, not, not for this personally in that respect. I know, but I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, no, 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 no. I never had a, such a. I never thought I'd hear Ferris it. Bueller and Falling Down to <laughs> put in that same context. <laughs> Two excellent films, though. La Haine as well. Yep. Oh, La Haine is great. Um, Certainly very different. <laughs> yeah. And what do you hope audiences take from this film? A sense of Dublin and uh, a time. It's a very much a, a kind of a moment in time film in that, like, it represents. Um, a kind of nearly a kind of coming of age in a certain way, mm. um, and also two characters are forced to kind of mature very quickly. yeah very quickly yeah and it's the idea of that we all have and certainly as actor you definitely have the idea of like what do you have to change or do to actually give yourself the opportunity to succeed mm. or try and succeed yeah, yeah, yeah. if success if like, if success is what you're after, what you're after yeah, yeah. Right? like you know, success but you know to actually kind of explore what you think you want to do. Mm. So, yeah, I, yeah, I think yeah, and the music as well. I mean, it's it's such a lovely film. I, I, yeah, I mean, if people come out of it and like enjoy, it. I mean, enjoy. It. Yeah, it's it's a lovely film, and I think I don't know. Yeah, just hopefully people can relate to it. Yeah, yeah. again, I, I, hopefully. I mean, you know, that they see something in characters and the experiences they're having, they're having that that they can, they can relate to. It. Yeah, and yeah. understand. And, you know, yeah, that's always, I suppose, what you're hoping for. I guess. Great, and finally, what's next for both of you? I um I've t- uh, two two films coming out later this year. One is an Irish um, an English co-production called Traders, um, which is myself and uh, John Bradley West, who plays Sam in Game of Thrones. And then there's a film I did in England called Trespass Against Us, um, which I think they're both out sort of later later this year. I think. We'll see. Great. We'll see if I'm still in. <laughs> and I have a play in this lovely space next to us. Great. Before monsters were made. Fantastic. Yeah. Guys, good luck with Get Up and Go. It really is a lovely film. And thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks.